Hello guys, you're watching Played Right and today we're gonna see how to play Seize the Bean by Quality Beast. In Seize the Bean, you are a successful barista living in Berlin, a bit ambitious, maybe a bit pretentious, and you want to open the best cafe in the city. But so do your fellow players, so you are in direct competition with them. In order to win the game, you need to gather the most good reviews for your coffee place. Let's start by setting up the game and getting to know the components of it. Over here we have the city area and these are the player areas for each player. In the city area you have the customers, the products and the upgrades. For each of these decks I have laid out five cards. As you can notice the customer cards are different colors at the bottom and they represent different customer groups like for example hipsters and musicians. The upgrade cards have the same categorization and the products refer to the customer groups as well by displaying their individual icon. You can also see the resources in these cups. Sugar cubes, coffee beans and milk cartons. And in these cups are the resources of each player. I have set up a game for three players and I have dealt the first player token and the next first player token to the player on the left. Here we put the good reviews, which on the flip side, they have the patience token. And we have set for a three player game, 36 good reviews and we stack them close to the city area. Once these are depleted, then the end of the game is triggered, which we will see later on. Also, you place the customer awards for each customer group and the bad reviews, which on the flip side, they have the impatience tokens. Now let's have a look at the player area. This is your player board and you get two meeples on it that you will use to choose your actions. On the left side, you will be able to collect product cards and on the right side, upgrade cards, which you will need to stack like this, creating a bar line. Over here, you place your hype tokens. You start off with two hype, and during the game, you can go up to five. Hype affects the number of customers that come to your shop every day. There's also the cafe award tokens placed over here that will be available for you to get during the game, depending on the amount of upgrades and products you will be collecting. Each player also gets four unique family and friends cards, which you need to shuffle and place face down to form your initial customer deck. Last, each player gets five coffee beans and one milk, which you can easily remember as it's the sum of the ingredients at the top corner of your family and friends cards. Each player has its own line of customers to serve, so leave some space close to your player area for your line of customers your customer deck and your discard pile. During the game, the players take their turns over the course of a game day. They continue playing for as many game days as required until a player takes the last available good review. A game day is divided over four steps. Serve the customers, perform actions, receive word of mouth, end of day cleanup. The players' cafes have just opened, so for the very first game day, they cannot serve any customers. So we move on to the next step, which is performing actions. During an action step, each player in turn order chooses one of the six available actions on the player board, marking it with one of the player meeples. After all the players have performed this one action, they repeat the process by choosing one more action and resolving it again in player order. The actions you can do allow you to acquire resources on the left side of the player board, and here's also the space for your pantry, which will be formed by stacking product cards. The way to get the product cards is through the city actions. The city actions primarily give you cards. When acquiring resources with the resource actions, you can choose from taking a scoop of coffee beans or if you're not into playing with the scoop, you can get six coffee beans or then you can choose three sugars or three milks. The product cards you will place on the left side will allow you to take extra resources and actions in the same horizontal line when placing your meeple on one of the actions. So you have the base effect and the added icons 
and they can be activated by the players in any order. The same applies for the actions on the right side of the player board, the city actions. These actions allow you to take a customer, a product or an upgrade from the city. The upgrade cards you will place here will allow you to upgrade the base effect of an action and these form your decor. For example, by choosing to install an upgrade, you place the free Wi-Fi upgrade card and the next time you choose this action, you also get a good review. When choosing to attract new customers, you can take a customer from the city and place it in your discard pile. When choosing to stock a product, you take a product card from the city and place it into your pantry. After the action step is over for all the players, we move to the word of mouth. Players choose and take one customer from the city whose group matches the visible customer group icon on their player board, either from the last product they took or any of the upgrade cards, and they place them on their discard pile. If none of them matches the customers in the city line, then the player doesn't get any. And after this, it's the end of the day. All players, according to their current hype number, draw as many new customer cards from their customer deck and place them into their line from left to right. If in the meantime their deck runs out, they shuffle their discard pile into a new deck and draw from it. Moving on to a new day, the cards in the city all advance one column forward. The last column is discarded, forming a discard pile, and a new card is drawn and placed for each city deck. Also, players reset their meeples and the first player token is passed on to the player with the next first player token. Now for the second game day, we can start serving the customers in our line. Serving is also happening in player order and the active player needs to serve all of his customers before proceeding to the next player's turn. You need to serve one customer at a time from left to right and you can't skip a customer if you have the possibility to serve him, except for the customers having a patience token on them, which is optional to serve them. In order to serve a customer, you need to pay the required ingredients indicated on the top left corner of that customer card. Immediately after doing so, you get the reward listed underneath the required ingredients, which is one good review in this example. After paying the required ingredients, a player may choose to pay the bonus ingredients, if the card displays any, in order to gain more rewards from that customer. Apart from the coffee beans and milk, there's also the special ingredients. High quality coffee, cheap coffee and soy milk. For those, you need to pay double the resources unless you have a matching special ingredient icon in your pantry, in which case you need to pay just one. The same applies for the snacks, you need to pay two sugar cubes unless you have a matching symbol in your pantry, in which case you pay one less sugar. After the customer is served and before moving on to the next customer, the player needs to resolve the customer's ability. The friends and family abilities are optional. These abilities allow you to raise or lower your hype, remove customers from your line, place patience tokens on customers and so on. If a player cannot pay a customer's required ingredients, then they must announce it, giving the chance to the other players to step in and serve them themselves. Going around the table in clockwise order, if a player decides to serve a customer, then they need to treat him as if he was on their own line, as in paying for the ingredients, uh, getting the rewards and activating the customer's ability. If no one decides to serve the customer, you place an impatience token on it and you move on to serving the next customer in line. The impatience tokens become bad reviews at the end of the serve step and the patience tokens become good reviews. A patience token chases away any impatience tokens on a customer and prevents new impatience tokens from being placed on that card. Also note that when you move on to the next customer that you need to serve that has an impatience token on him, you move on to the next customer in line as the impatient customer is on his way out of your shop. When you finish serving your line, you discard all customers that do not have a patience or impatience token. All impatience tokens get flipped and kept as bad reviews. If the player has more than three bad reviews, then the customer is removed from the game or placed in the discard pile of the city. 
If he has less than three bad reviews, then he places this customer card in his discard pile. Customers with one or more patient's tokens are kept in the line to be served the next game day, and a patient's token from each of these customers becomes a good review. When the last available good review is taken, then the players finish that game day as normal, and then they play one more shortened game day consisting only of the serving step. When that shortened game day is over, then the game ends and players need to count their scores. For the scoring, players get one point for every good review they have and subtract one point for every bad one. Then players take all of the customer cards from their line, the discard pile and their deck and they sort them by customer group and all three different types of cards are included in the count. Note that for the products, only the last bought product card has a visible customer group icon, so you only count that card. The player with the most group's icons receives that group's customer award token, which gives an amount of extra good reviews that will be turned into victory points. There is also the family and friends award that is awarded to the player who is left with no family and friends cards in his deck. Last but not least, players check if they have unlocked any product or upgrade awards on their player board and receive the matching points. And the player with the most points wins the game. In case of a tie, you keep playing until there is a clear winner. So that was Seize the Bean. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoy the game.